the glass pane look has become very popular, especially because of that TV show where they solve crimes in Miami. To be honest, I've never actually seen it, but I saw the famous open years ago, and yet it's in my mind as if I saw it yesterday. That's how cool this effect is, and that's why I wanted to create this tutorial. This way, you don't have to solve the mystery of how they did it. To get started, make sure you have Final Cut open. Be sure to drag your clip down to the timeline. I have a 5 second clip of some cows hanging out in the pasture that will work with the theme. First off, duplicate the clip by holding down the Option and Shift keys. Left click on the mouse and jockey the clip up to track 2. So far, it looks like we haven't done a whole lot. Make sure the clip in track 2 is selected and then fly the mouse up to Effects, Video Filters, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. Select the Filters tab in the viewer and increase the radius to 5. Cool! Now let's make some bars. Click on the Motion tab, select the Crops Disclosure Triangle. Move the left slider over to 3. Then change the right slider to 83. Now mosey on down to the Drop Shadow section. Don't close the crop area because we'll revisit it later. Select the check box next to Drop Shadow. Change the offset to 0 so our shadow will appear on the left and right sides of the bar. Crank the softness up to 60. While we're here, move the opacity slider to 86. Already, this looks like a great glass pane bar. But let's kick it up a notch and add a composite mode. Right click on the clip in track 2. Choose composite mode and then soft light. Now that's cool. To make this effect work, we'll need multiple duplicates of our clip. Duplicate our clip in track 2 three times. Be sure to move them to the right so they're out of the way. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the clip. Create a keyframe for the left and right crop by clicking on their keyframe buttons. Once that's complete, hit the Shift and O keys to move to the out point of our clip. Shift and I keys go to the in point. If I hit the down arrow key, it will take me to the next clip, which I don't want. OK, here we are. Change the left slider to 30. It looks like we lost our bar, so move the right slider over to 57. If we quickly click down our timeline, we can see that our bar moves to the right. Let's just open this up a little more. Grab one of our miscellaneous clips and place it above our stack of stuff. Move the playhead to the start of the clip. Double click on the clip to get it into our viewer. Move the right slider to 29 and then the left to 42. Create two lovely keyframes and then press down the Shift and O keys. Move the right slider all the way over to the left so our right is zero. Then change the left to 81. We still have two more clips, so grab another one and get it into track 4. Make sure it lines up with the others. Hit the up arrow and then double click on our newest clip. Type 92 for the left. Hit the tab key and then type in 5 for the right. You guessed it, create some keyframes and then gently hit the Shift and O keys. Type in 72 for the left and then 16 for the right. If we click down the timeline, we can see that we're missing that final touch, hence the last clip. Move it into track 5 so it'll be the king of the stack. Double click on the clip and hit the Shift and I keys. Move the right slider over to 71 and the left slider over to 29. This made it so we no longer have a bar, which will allow us to make it magically appear. Create keyframes for the left and right. Push down the Shift and O keys. Type in 10 for the left. 
presto, we have a bar. Type 74 for the right, and we now have a complete project that should look like this. A lot of cool effects look more complicated than they really are. And this effect is no exception. So have fun playing around with this effect and be sure to check out my training DVD at creativecowtraining.net. Well, this forensic expert is out of here to patronize the donut shop. Oh yeah, donuts.